This is who I was, but it's definitely not who I am. Welcome to Vegas Prison Stories. July 25th, 2017. Two young men walk into a Northern Nevada 7-Eleven and hold it up. About 4.30 in the morning, they got their little pow pals on them. I'm gonna need all that money, I'm gonna need it now. So they get away, undisclosed amount of money. Then another call comes in. This one, the Reno Police Department comes to, another 7-Eleven, not too long after the first one. Obviously, somebody's out there doing some bad, bad things. Now, I can't imagine they got away with much, maybe a few hundred dollars, if that. I mean, everything's locked down so tight now, it's just not even worth doing, but they did it. So when the second call comes in, the suspects and the vehicle, the getaway vehicle, well, they match up. So about a week after this, the detectives, they make arrests. They get two of them. They had grabbed themselves 18-year-old Anthony Robert Leary and 18-year-old Isaiah Sharp. And they charged both of the, the teens, I mean, they're 18, they, they charged them both with robbery with use of a deadly weapon times two. Now the day after that, detectives got their third suspect, Chris Lopez Stein, also 18 years old, and he got charged along with the other two with the same thing. Two counts, robbery with the use of a deadly weapon. You boys are about to have a really bad day. Now apparently these three teens, they were co-workers. They were drunk, it was the middle of the night, and they decided in all of their infinite young wisdom that robbing a couple of 7-Elevens was the thing to do. Obviously, it was a spree, but it wasn't a spree. Like they hit two of them, but then after that, that was it. I'm sure that there was some sort of partaking going on, you know, of, of the illegal substance. And that probably drove them to pull these so that they could go re-up maybe. I'm not gonna say that's how it is. I'm just saying that's the most logical to me. So the first of the teens, Anthony Robert Leary. He was convicted of the two robberies with the use of a deadly weapon. He got two to six on each of those robberies to run concurrent. And then the judge broke him off with a one to three for the enhancement for the use of a deadly weapon times two. Now that ran consecutive to the robberies, but concurrent to each other, if that makes any sense to you. So he got basically a two to six backed up by a one to three. In aggregate, he got three to nine years, which is not bad. It's about typical for a robbery, at least in Nevada. Now, Anthony Robert Leary, he served his sentence. He's now out, he got his parole, he's off parole, he's a free man. He did his time like a man, took it on the chin, and probably, you know, went on about his life. Anthony, if you're ever watching this, which you could, my advice to you, leave Nevada. There's nothing there. Even if your family's there, you can go back and visit them. Just leave. As for the second of the three, Chris Lopez Stein, well, I couldn't find anything in the NDOC. It looks like he just got off scot-free. Now, I'm not gonna put a jacket on somebody unless I know for sure. But I also know, I'm also street. I know better. It smells fishy, two of them get charged, and go to prison and the other one has no prison record, we can go ahead and probably put a fair guess out there as to who told. And that leaves the last of the trio, Isaiah Sharp. Now Isaiah, he was convicted on both of the robberies also and got like two to five to seven, which isn't too bad on the robberies. Two times to run concurrent with each other. Basically the same as his friend had gotten. Now that was backed up by two one to four year sentences. Those are to run consecutive to the robberies, but concurrent with each other. So in aggregate, this kid got broke off with three years, eight months to 11 years. Now his first few years in, he worked his way down through the levels. Everybody starts out in level four, then either, I mean, I've seen people get shipped right away down to camp, I, you know, any of that, but he was in on a robbery. So I'm sure he had to go from four down to probably two. And then he had worked himself into the fire camp at Tonopah. Then comes January, 2021. Isaiah Sharp gets caught with a cell phone at the camp. Of course, they're not playing that. And what do they do? 
ship him right back to High Desert, good old High Desert State Prison, Nevada. Now fast forward a couple of months to March 10th, 2021. He's in front of the parole board. Obviously he didn't get charged for the cell phone, but he lost his level because he got his parole. He made his parole. He had been down for almost four years and they're telling him in three weeks, you're going home, kid. I mean, that's gotta be the greatest feeling in the world. I know it is. So his out date is March 31st. He's only gotta make it three more weeks. Now a month before, they had moved him into a new cell. His cellie is this man, Andrew Hilford. Now Andrew Hilford was charged in a 2006 murder robbery where he took a stolen shoddy and blasted a dude who was walking by his car and then decided to rob the guy too. Now they charged him with murder in the first degree with the use of a deadly weapon, three counts of robbery with the use of a deadly weapon. Now in 2008, he took the deal. He took a deal for murder in the first degree and one solo count of robbery. They gave him 20 to life for the murder and they gave him six to 15 for the robbery to be run concurrent. So basically that robbery meant nothing. He was doing 20 to life. In 2012, Andrew Hilford had been charged by the, the institution, institutional charges, you know, for possession of a shank. So the dude, you know, he was programming like a lifer. That's a fact. Now 2017, Andrew Hilford is charged with four counts of attempt murder. Then in 2019, he's charged with attempting to attack a correctional officer. Now, obviously this dude's a Rudy Poo and he's all about that life, right? Like some people are just broken. Some people just wanna see the world burn. Andrew Hilford must be one of these people. It is what it is. There are people like him. Andrew Hilford, about a month before they had moved Isaiah Sharp into his cell, had told prison officials I only want to sell with this one person. If anybody else comes in my cell, I'm going to hurt them. March 14th, 2021. Isaiah Sharp has one week to the house. 6.30 PM, you have a CO trainee walk in the tier. And all of a sudden, Andrew Hilford is yelling out of his cell, hey, you need to get this dude out of my cell. Now the CO walks over, looks through the window, and there's Isaiah laying on the floor in a pool of his own blood. Before COs could get Andrew Hilford cuffed, he was standing over Isaiah with the TV, motioning like he was gonna drop it on his head. Out of that TV was cut a two inch shank. It is hard plastic. I mean, obviously you could do some work with it. Andrew Hilford had hit Isaiah Sharp 92 times in his head, in his back, in his chest, in his arms. I mean, 92 times when the lieutenant, after they had finally gotten Hilford cuffed and out of the cell, the lieutenant went in and he stated that Isaiah Sharp's eyes were gone. They couldn't find a pulse and it looked like he had been there for a while in that condition. Andrew Hilford was indicted for the murder of Isaiah Sharp in December, 2021. So it's crazy. Less than two weeks ago, he took a plea deal on this case. Andrew Hilford pled guilty to one solo count of murder in the first degree. What's gonna happen in that? Are they gonna give him another 20 to life? Are they gonna give him life without? Are they gonna give him 10 years? We don't know. We're gonna have to wait till October of this year to find out. Now, a lot has been said about why Isaiah Sharp was put in the cell with Andrew Hilford. Andrew Hilford obviously had told prison officials, hey, you obviously know I'm a dangerous man. Look at my record. You've caught me with shanks. I've tried to kill four people in one sitting and I tried to attack one of you. You know I'm about this business and if you don't give me the celly I want, you better not give me any cellies. And they went and they put this kid, this a week to the house. At that time, he hadn't had his parole but they, they kind of understand what's going on. Now this kid, they say, oh, he was young and he shouldn't have been put in. That's not how that works. He was convicted of a violent crime. Two counts of robbery is a violent crime. 
it is what it is. Murderers got to be sold. I've had murderers as my cellie before. Nobody like Andrew Hilford, thank God. But you can't just say, oh, this is a kid who was in there for petty theft. Why was he put with a murderer? They were both violent offenders. And this is cautionary. This is truly cautionary. As sad as it is, Isaiah Sharp would not have been in that situation had he not gotten caught for a cell phone. Should it have costed him his life? I mean, no, of course not. But things like this, they work out that way. Like, he could have been sitting at the camp, gotten, gotten his parole, and been good. Don't go to jail. Don't go to prison. People like this are in prison. There are men all over prison like Andrew Hilford. They are just broken parts. That's it. They're glued together. Now, that doesn't take away from how sad it is. This kid, he was, what, 21? Maybe? 22 at the most? I mean, nobody deserves to go out like that. I mean, there are people. Jared from Subway definitely deserves to go out like that. That's 100%. And then there's people, you know, there's, there's them people that like to talk a lot about other people's cases. But for this kid to be selled up when the prison, they knew. The prison officials knew not to put them in there. And they did it anyway. And that's reckless. And Isaiah Sharp's family has, has filed a lawsuit for the death of Isaiah because of all this coming out. Because there are records of this guy saying this. If you put anybody near me, I'm going to hurt him. Well, he did what he said he was going to do. The dude might be crazy. The dude might be unhinged. But he wasn't lying when he told them not to put anybody with him. And this happens all the time. It's like a little game that they play. Maybe Isaiah had said something to piss off one of the COs. And the CO's like, oh yeah, I got a celly for you. And they threw him in there. And they don't even care. It's funny. They'll probably take bets on how long Isaiah would have lasted in that cell before Andrew had done something to him. Like, that's how the COs get down. It's like a death pool in there. This is a horrible, horrible place to be. Don't go to prison. This is why. This is exactly why you should not go to prison. It is not a good place. And at every turn, there are Andrew Hilfords. I promise you that. Or you'll become... Andrew Hilford. And I, I don't ever hope and pray for somebody to get life without. There are men in this world that need to be in prison though. And they need to be there forever. Because they need to be able to protect the public from men like this. This man has probably only been good at one thing in his life and that's killing. And he's shown to be really good at it. So thank you for coming to Vegas Prison Stories. I appreciate each and every one of you. I hope you guys have an amazing day and I'll see you next time. This is who I was, but it's definitely not who I am. Welcome to Vegas Prison Stories.